Hello and welcome to episode one of Five Minute Materials, the show where we look at a new material node every single week. So this episode, we're going to be discussing the Vertex Normal World Space node. Now, first thing we do when we discover a new useful node is we plug it straight into the base color. So straight away, you can see everything looks a bit, uh, a bit colorful. And the reason that it is so colorful is because... Let's take this octagon here, for example. So if we were to mask it in the B channel, B being blue and also the Z axis, which is up and down, it will give you a value based on the vertex's angle in world space. So if we were to take this face here, this would be equal to one. This one on the side facing like directly horizontal would be zero. And then the downwards facing vertices would be negative one. So if we were to go ahead and mask this vertex normal world space only in the B channel, you can see straight away that up here on the top of this sphere, this is one, this is pure white. And then as we go down to the sides, this is where zero is. And because we can't actually visualize negative blacks, this is negative one down here. If I grab this and I mask it in the G channel, then you'll see the Y values, one, negative one. And in the red channel, we get the X, one, a negative one. So what can we actually do with this information? The number one use I find for this is to actually use this value as a mask for blending between two textures or something. So if I grab a texture sample real quick, and we're gonna do a lerp, and this is gonna be the alpha of our, our lerp. All right, so right now I've got this set up to lerp between a moss texture and a rock color. And you can see it's gone a bit janky because we haven't accounted for the fact that this actually goes into the negative. So what you can do is just saturate that. Saturate is just a clamp between zero and one, but it doesn't use any instructions. Um, and now you can see we've got moss on top. We got rock on bottom which is fantastic. Now, if we wanted to doodle around with this a bit further, if I was to add an add node and a multiply node, one after the other and parameterize both of them, this one would be called offset. This one would be called hardness. You can see that moving the add one up and down, it just moves this, this midpoint up and down without actually changing the hardness. And then if we increase the multiplier, it will make it harder. And so, you know, if we if we now change this, you can see it really clearly moving from one to the other. We can also use this to lerp between normal maps. So using the exact same value there. And now with these, these normal maps set up, they're also within this lerp now. Very cool. So you could use this to procedurally put stuff on top of your rocks. So you can see over here uh, in my snowy area of my game, I've procedurally placed snow on top of these rocks using vertex normal world space. So another cool thing we can do with this is we can actually use this to determine world position offset. So if we put our post saturated value into a multiply, we're also just gonna make this into a float three and only affect the Z axis. So now if I have a look at this and I increase this parameter, you'll see that our sphere grows taller based on the vertex normal world space. And you can use this to make it look like Things are actually piling on top of your objects. You could even use it for something like having the upwards part of your mesh be affected by wind only. And so, you know, as I increase the offset, you can see this is all affected by wind, whereas this isn't. A benefit of this is that no matter which way I rotate this mesh, the actual mask stays the same. Even though these textures are moving around, the mask between them is always the upwards facing vertex. Now you can see this effect a little more clearly with a cylinder. So as I turn it on its side, the mossy parts facing up. If I turn it this way, the mossy parts facing up. And if I start to roll it around this way, it's always facing up. As another little example of what else I use this node in a lot, um, I've got this explosion here, which instead of using a particle system, I've actually opted to use a mesh, which gets a cloud noise texture and it multiplies it by the vertex normal world space. And so what this does is applies world position offset 
in the direction that the mesh is facing. So it's always going radially out from the center of this sphere. So if we go back to our sphere example and I get this node and I grab a multiplier and I just chuck that into world position offset, plug a sine wave in and multiply that by, I don't know, let's go by 10. And this will fluctuate like a, like a beating heart or something, um, <laughs> which is kind of cool. So yeah, so that's just using the direction that the vertex is facing, multiplying that by a value, putting it into world position offset, and it's basically expanding and contracting it. So as you can see, we can use this node for masking certain areas of a mesh and also using it to determine the direction that we displace something by. Now I know there are hundreds, if not thousands of other applications of this node, but this is just a quick little introductory episode so that it can get your brain juices flowing and get you thinking of unique ways to use this node. I've just gone over two of the really common use cases for this node, but if you've got a specific use that you use it for, drop it in the comments below and I'll probably make another episode of Vertex Normal World Space covering some more advanced things or just really wacky kind of zany, zany effects that we can come up with. As always, if you found this entertaining or educational, uh, then make sure you like and subscribe. Liking and subscribing really helps get these videos out to more people and helps spread this knowledge even further. So with that, I say goodbye. Goodbye.